What's up guys, Ryan Nose Tech here today with Tech Inform Night US and today, uh, as I promised last week when I did the really short and quick unboxing and installation of iLife uh, 2011, we're going to take a look at uh, at least the three big applications that they changed in here. I don't believe they even touched um, iWeb and iDVD, so we probably won't spend much if any time on that, but in this video we're just going to take a look at iPhoto 2011. So uh, there it is down in the dock. The icon hasn't changed at all but what the application does and how it does it has changed a little bit which is uh, which is nice and nice to see that they are changing stuff so open it up just go over here to events here's all the events I happen to have on here um, no sample stuff this is actually what my library looks like surprise surprise cars and and uh, vacation stuff so um, you know it's it's really not that different until this point um, we can see that everything over here, the icons are slightly different. I'm really glad they didn't take the iTunes 10 approach and make everything black and white. We actually have some color and I think a little bit bigger graphics, which uh, which are nice. Definitely add a little bit of color over there. look great. So then there's your albums. Uh, this is pretty standard. I don't really think they've changed anything here. One thing a lot of people don't know about iLife or uh, iPhoto in general is uh, something we actually had before. When you scroll over the albums here, you get, uh, as you scrub over it, I guess, you get the preview of what's inside of it, which is nice. If you're looking for something, uh, maybe seeing multiple pictures in that album will jog your memory. Oh, wait, it's not there. It's over here. So that's nice to see. The other big thing you notice is this bar down at the bottom. That has changed. That is new. Um, one of the big things Apple's talking about is full screen. I hope it's still recording. Uh, some applications don't like to record in full screen, but I think we're safe with screen flow. So here it is in, in uh, full screen. I'll be honest, if you're doing a, a short presentation to um, friends or anything like that, it's really nice to be able to um, to put it in full screen so you don't have all that other clutter on the desktop gives you a lot more space and look at this kind of a iLife approach to events um, faces and places we'll look at looks pretty abysmal right now just wait just wait I'm gonna make my round around the country sometime <laughs> at least not until spring break and then albums and projects are uh, really easily viewed um, real quick we'll go back over to places here uh, we can do satellite, terrain, and hybrid, and I might add that these uh, at these maps are really quick. One and two, really beautiful maps. I mean, Steve Jobs wasn't kidding. Uh, you zoom in, it's really nice quality, looks great. Um, come into a place where you've taken pictures. I'm not going to go directly into my house, that'd be stupid, but here we are in Hudson. Click on the little arrow, and then uh, there's one picture I took in that location. There it is, nice, little, nice garage. Um, lots of pins everywhere and that's where you find uh, find your photos. Here's actually a movie that I made that was a vlog I uploaded a while ago up north from here. So that's really nice to be able to have that map look there. Um, down here you can do more stuff down in this bar. You can adjust the zoom level um, when you're in map it's going to look like that. You can also come over here and find uh, the, the places and cities and states that you've taken pictures much easily, easier. So that's cool. Press escape to get out of full screen. It's kind of annoying if you're trying to multitask and do some other stuff, but when you're not, it's, uh, be honest, it's really nice. So uh, a couple of the big things that are new in iLife or iPhoto 2011 are these things down here in the bottom right. We're just going to go into a picture. Where is that album? We're going to use this picture. Click on info. Guess what? There's all your information, your resolution, it's a JPEG, it's 2.1 meg, ISO 80, 3.9 millimeters. You can tag faces here, you can share it from here, uh, assign it to a place. Click on edit. This is kind of cool, they've taken a new touch to this. A um, little bit easier, you can do rotate, enhance, red eye, straighten, crop, and retouch right there under quick fixes, and it's super easy. Click on retouch, then you can just go over an area, and it's kind of like the, um, the magic healing brush or the spot healing brush in uh, Photoshop. Under effects, I'll be honest, they've made this really easy, but it really isn't the way um, I would like to see it as a, you know, obviously not a professional editor, but somebody who does think they know what they're doing. Um, saturate, you just touch it. It's that easy. You touch what you want to do here. Saturate. Contrast, you come over here, darken, that'll darken it up. You don't have any sliders. Lighten to click that. Warmer colors there. Cooler colors. If you really screwed up, you take it way too cool, then you can come down here and click on revert to original. So that's nice. Over here you can do an edge blur, that, I mean you've got uh, 
lots of tones here, black and white, and then you can uh, turn them off and adjust how strong they are down there at the bottom. So definitely a nice suite of applica a nice uh, suite of accessories here uh, to be able to edit it. But what I like is over here under adjust. You can really get into the contrast more here with the bar. I think the bar is better. You got a histogram up there, the, the uh, temperature, the tint, all your editing. Serious, more serious anyways. Editing is done from there. So that's under the edit box. Under create, we'll take a quick look in here. This is where you create your books, your cards, your albums, and then your slideshows. So let's make a super quick book. Really easy uh, to do this. There's your picture. Then you can use uh, the carousel here to go through the different kind of books you can create. It's going to tell you the price of each book in the bottom left there. 99 cents extra each page and then $29.99 each. There's your size. You can order them and then they'll ship them to you. The purpose of this video, how about we choose um, that might be the default one there called the journal. So then you can change the colors of it. You can go through like multi-colors over here, these little pads change it to red, then you can do an extra large or a large book. And notice up at the top you can do hardcover, soft color, or wire bound. So this couldn't get any more, uh, it really couldn't get any easier. Um, that looks good, we'll create something like that. Let's use this more dull color, create. Then from here it's going to cycle in a whole bunch of photos, probably from the same album, or uh, actually it hasn't put in any more photos. But if we wanted to, we could go right here. Page one, we can write stuff in here, change the text, lots of text tools. Uh, when we're done, we just click on buy book. But this editing process is really easy. It'll actually take, um, you guys that watch the keynote, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It'll take photos that you've rated with a higher number of stars, like five stars versus two stars, and make that five star photo a, a full page spread, like this one on the left. Maybe you've given some, uh, maybe only one, two, three stars, it's gonna make those smaller. So it knows what you like and what you don't. Obviously, you can drag images around. If I were to fill this up, it just takes more time, so I won't. But uh, just drag them around where you want them. You can adjust them the size, um, probably some effects. Uh, drag the pages around. I mean, it, it could not get any, any easier to do this. It's unbelievably easy to do this. Um, when you're done, buy a book. Pay for it online. It'll uh, ship to you from Apple. That will make it. They do a great job. Uh, if you watch the keynote, the craftsmanship that they put into some of the stenciling is really incredible. Uh, but all this, again, is editable. Color-wise, you can put a little background there of the, the bridge, but you can't see it because that sample image is in the way. And then you can also change uh, what this looks like as far as making a, a big one photo spread. Maybe you want five photos here to look like that. Uh, again, super easy to, to make it whatever you want. Really easy to personalize it. Clicking on design down here is going to give you some more colors and layout just like we did um, by whatever I did to it before. Uh, photos, that's where you're going to add your photos. So you can come over here to show. How about, uh, well, we'll do, just put this one back in. Just drag it in there. Drag another one over here. How easy is that? Then if we wanted to kind of zoom in on it, we could drag that in. Get that side there. Could not be easier as most Apple things are. So I really like that. Probably won't be using it a whole lot, but if I ever did, well, it couldn't get any better than that. So we will go back. There's probably an easier way to go back, but I haven't found it yet. So we're going to go back this way and click on Add To. And uh, that's where you do your book, as we just saw. You can also make a card. It's the same process. I won't go through it. And then Slideshow, another uh, incredibly easy uh, way to do this is just to make a slideshow. You can actually do it, I think, from Events. If we come into Events and uh, go over to, what did I take on October 23rd? Oh, yeah, that. That was supposed to be a wallpaper. Click on slideshow. If you had more pictures, obviously it would be longer. Um, it automatically dims the screen, puts the date up there, and then you can kind of pick a theme here about the origami theme, set some music to it. Obviously, you've got your sample music or anything from iTunes you like, and then there's your settings to repeat it, to show the title, how long you want each picture to be up, to fit the slideshow to the music as far as how often it changes. Um, uh, you know, once more, couldn't get any easier to do that. And then the last thing here, which is also cool, is share. Now we can also, uh, sharing a photo, we'll just use this BMW one again, we can order a print of that. Click on that, we'll ship it to us, we'll pay for it right now. Uh, adjust the paper and the size and everything we want here. You can even do a 20 by 30, which is 15 bucks, but your standard 4 by 6 is only 12 cents, so that's not too bad at all. 
and also under share. Publish it to MobileMe, Flickr, Facebook, or email. And email was one of the things that they stressed here. If we want to send that picture, we don't even have to leave iPhoto. Keep in mind we could be doing all of this in, um, in full screen mode. Over here, let's make a postcard out of it. There's the image. Let's drag that down a little bit more. Center it. Title. We will title it a 2000 BMW E39 M5. There's a title. We can change the date over here. Insert your message there. I mean, how cool is that? If I got something in the mail like that a year ago, I would. the first thing I would do is reply and say, how did you make that? And then obviously your two subject is at your two and subject boxes are up here. Then you can adjust your, uh, your email addresses from there. So another uh, incredibly easy way to, uh, to do stuff in iMovie. And then the last thing we're going to take a look at is share to Facebook. Um, this, I, you have to log into your account, obviously, and accept the terms. Here's all my albums and my Facebook account. And uh, why don't we publish that photo to um, Cars Around Town. Just click that. One photo was published. Done. Just like that. So fast. And the photo uploaded very quickly. It's there. If I want to go add my caption, I can do that. And then again, you can read uh, all the comments that you got on that photo from here. Well, I'm not going to go comment on the photo, photo for that demonstration, but, you know, pretty intuitive. You get it. Anyhow, iPhoto 11 is really cool. I've been playing with it a little bit. I am a pretty heavy iPhoto user, so this is a great update. If you're thinking about getting iLife 11 and you don't want to buy the whole suite, keep in mind that with uh, the Mac App Store, they're probably going to be selling these applications one by one. So if you only want iPhoto, you can buy that. And I say that because it's 50 bucks. There's five apps, 10 bucks a piece. It just plays out. I was talking to Soldier Knows Best about it in the stream. We, uh, Not you know personally, but... Um, the group talked about it, and it's pretty much unanimous. They're going to be selling these in the App Store, all right, just like they do on the um, on the iPad with the iWork suite. So that'll be exciting to have. Uh, so definitely go out, take a look at iLife, at least play with it. It's definitely a positive upgrade and uh, makes things a lot easier. So that's my review of iPhoto 11 in iLife 11. Great products. So thanks for watching the video. Please subscribe to the channel if you like the content. Uh, leave me a comment. Hit that little thumbs up button. That always helps, or the like. And uh, our website is techinform.us. My Twitter, all these links are down below, is twitter.com slash jamesrschultz. And then be sure to catch us live in just under two hours here on ustream.tv slash techinformus. Um, we do this every Tuesday night. So we'll see you there from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern Time or in tomorrow's. Uh, it'll be Wednesday's video. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.